What is up guys? Today we are at our local insurance auto auctions hunting one thing and one thing only, Mopars. Ever since running across that demon at Salvage Auction in New York, I have been on a Dodge kick. Scat packs, Hellcats, track calls. Thankfully, this lot has some good ones. We're just going to start with this track call. This is kind of a theme with the Mopar stuff more so than any other manufacturer we deal with. The car does not look damaged. If I had to guess from the start, I'd say it's a theft car. I see these at every salvage auction I go to, no matter where it is in the country. Unfortunately, these cars are just a very big target for thieves. That is a little odd. I was not expecting this car to have a key, and this is why. So maybe this thing got stolen, maybe they caught them, maybe they got the key later, or maybe that was just an error when they were labeling the car. Either way, it's a fantastic color combo. Kind of a dark charcoal gray with yellow calipers in this beautiful peanut butter interior. The Trackhawks are definitely more rare than the Hellcats, the Scat Packs and all that. We don't see as many of these at auction. So I'm really hoping I can get this thing started. Well, that was short-lived. So even though we found the key, it does not have any power whatsoever. The interior doesn't smell great, but it's not in bad shape. I don't really see any damage in here either. A lot of the theft ones will have the pillar removed. They'll have the dash peeled up back there. They'll have that defroster vent ripped off. Who knows? Maybe they stole the engine out of this. Judging by the way the front end's sitting, I would say that's unlikely, but you never know. Maybe they strapped some cinder blocks in here. Well, that's not the case. Everything looks really, really good with this car. I really don't know what to say about it. I guess we can call that a little damage there, even though that's kind of just normal stuff. Definitely no reason for it to end up here. I just took a look at the window sticker and it does say theft recovery. It really does not look that bad at all. You'll have to excuse the military drills going on over my head. We're really close to Andrews Air Force Base here, but we're gonna take one more walk around. If you're looking for a theft recovery track hawk, this is probably a pretty good option. It does have a missing lug nut, so make sure you take that into account when you're bidding. Otherwise, this thing is pretty much an unknown. We'll go ahead and move from one unknown to another unknown. I briefly looked at this car already, and it is the same exact thing. No visible damage whatsoever from the outside. Overall, actually a really clean car, even though it's sitting in an auction lot. A little dirty, a little filthy, as expected. Either way, this is one of the nicer examples of a presumably theft recovery Hellcat I've seen. So not a great color combo. I mean, black on black, pretty classic, but you guys know I'm a sucker for a cool color combo. Now, one thing I do notice here, the defroster vent intact, the A-pillar intact. This guy right here, broken down just a little bit. Unlike the last one, this one has a little power. Is it enough to start? Yes, it is. Go ahead and turn that off so we don't have to listen to the AC the whole time. The Trackhawk, great car. This one, I have to say even better. No visible damage, it actually runs. 15,000 miles. It really just looks like I'm sitting in somebody's car. It does not look like something that would be at a salvage auction. It sounds great, stock, but great. We do have to see what's going on under the hood because if that's intact, this is gonna be one expensive salvage auction Hellcat. Guys, this really looks just like a massive winner of a salvage auction find. <laughs> It's just really hard to deny that this is a fantastic car. Now it's going to come with a price tag. How much of a price tag? I don't know. I would guess thirty-five to forty thousand dollars. Once in a while, we find steals, and nobody else knows their steals. Then we can get them kind of cheap. This one, looking at the site, watching the run video on IAA.com, a lot of people are going to know this is a really nice car. So the chance of this one slipping by? Now from a really great looking car to a car that definitely has some question marks. As far as how the cars are optioned, you gotta go with this one. Orange, great color. Wide body, always love that. It looks like the driver's door is taped up, which is quite unfortunate, meaning we can't get in there. This is the first one of these three that we can actually look over some damage and try to draw an opinion about the car. 
First off, the left side, great looking. At first glance, I thought the stripes on this were black. It turns out they are carbon fiber wrapped. It actually looks pretty cool. Whereas those cars over there looked bone stock, it looks like this guy did a little bit. Now, whether it has any more than just aftermarket stickers and a different kind of stripe, who knows, we'll see. The rear passenger side, A-OK. -okay. Up there is where we get to the damage, but we're gonna check out the inside first because this side, it's not taped. All right, another black interior car, and this one is missing a few things. Kind of ironic, the two cars over there that are actually theft cars, perfectly intact, not missing anything. The car that is here for a very obvious collision is missing the head unit, missing the cluster, missing that bezel. Other than what's obviously missing in here, it doesn't look like anything is cut, which is very important. A lot of times when people steal this stuff, they'll just cut those wires instead of disconnecting them. Seats don't look too bad. They're in pretty good shape. Everything else on the interior looks pretty kosher. Did blow the passenger roof bag as well. Now let's get to the good stuff or well, not so good stuff, but you get my point. Not a great looking hit. That is... 100% I believe a telephone pole, something like that. It definitely hit some very solid, very round object right there. Now the big question here is did it miss the engine? It obviously contacted the alternator there just a little bit, but that alone, not a big deal. The heat exchanger setup, the radiator, the condenser, all this stuff is pushed back into the engine. In fact, you can see the contact right there. Typically that alone is not enough to really hurt the engine. It'll bend pulleys, it'll damage accessories, it'll knock a belt off, but all that stuff can be fixed very easily. What I worry about in a hit like this is something very solid like this here, or the frame rail over there going into the engine, actually cracking the block, cracking something like the motor mount pedestal, something that is gonna be a pain to fix, something that you can't just pull off and bolt a new one on. We're not really even gonna get into the frame damage aspect of this because it's crushed. On a scale of one to 10, this one is like an eight or nine. I've certainly seen worse, but in my opinion, this is something that should be parted out. Now it is easy for me to say that being in the salvage industry, there's a lot of people out there that are capable of fixing this. Maybe you're one of them. One bad note is the hood is taped shut. You know, I make it a habit not to mess with with any of that stuff when I'm at these lots. So we're not gonna get a full underneath the hood look. One thing that undoubtedly will be okay, the supercharger, it's up high, that's not where the damage was. So at the very least, you got yourself a blower. But man, this thing is racked. This frame rail over here, if it matters, is straight-ish. Whatever the front beam here mounted to up there, presumably this, that looks right to me, just ripped right out but otherwise that does look square. I don't know how easy it is to get the scope of how inside and push back that is, but if you look at it from top like this, you can really start to tell. I am positive all that suspension is gonna need to be replaced. Obviously the fender, hood, this door, actually looks like it survived that does not look like it actually hit it also could be that these doors are so massive and so heavy trust me i've carried them that this much lighter fender here stood no chance against it when it got pushed back into it i'm not going to hop across the passenger side and try to start this one because of that damage there even if it does run which it is not listed as running on ia.com i don't want to start a car that very clearly has stuff pushed back into the belt take one more look at this lineup of sick mopars and let's keep rolling we found ourselves a nice bright red 392. Matching red Brembo's on it. This thing is whacked in the front end. Fortunately, from a frame damage standpoint, it looks like most of the damage, a little bit high. So that frame rail insert horn, whatever you want to call it, pulled right out. This rail itself does not look too bad, though I can't get the full scope of it, obviously. The worst side of it over here even this side's lower rail does not look god awful. A lot of the stuff that you need to weld and or bolt to the rail, that's in rough shape. If I had to guess, I would say it's over that way a little bit, but certainly not as bad as it could be. If this hit was a foot lower, those rails are mangled. Let's see if we can pop the hood and see a little more of that. That's not popping. The car does have keys. It does not have any power whatsoever. When I hopped in there to check that, I just realized that this is kind of a weird spec. We've done quite a few of these and I'm used to seeing the base cars with the checkered seats, not a straight black cloth. It does have cloth door panels as well, though they have that stitching there. It actually looks pretty good. From back here, it could pass as Alcantara. As for the bag situation, lower bag blown, steering wheel bag blown, passenger bag blown. The only bag not blown is the driver's curtain. The passenger over there, that's out. Seatbelt, locked. 
So while this car looks good from a front end standpoint, you're gonna need pretty much the whole host of interior stuff when you buy one of these that's badly wrecked. You will get yourself an aftermarket set of wheels which are made by Niche. Newer brake rotors as well, minor details when it comes to a car like this, but good nonetheless. You would have to throw the front passenger on a balancer, of course, because that's where it got hit. But aesthetically, at least, the wheels look like you have a nice full set. Now, what would you need to replace? Full core support assembly, radiator, condenser, all that good stuff. Hood, front bumper, fender. You'd have to cut in a new upper frame rail section there, the part that that fender mounts to. That is bent down pretty good. This side here, you'll get away without having to do that, but you will have to replace that entire upper section. You'll need headlights. Pretty much anything on this car that goes on the front end, you're gonna need to replace it. Even the nicer fender has a little damage, though you can probably fix that. Through our very limited window into the engine bay, I do see an aftermarket strut bar, some kind of chassis brace. I can't tell exactly what it is. Over on this side, I got a glimpse of an aftermarket intake. There is some kind of AN fitting up there. I have to imagine that is for a catch cam. I would bet my life on the fact that this car does not have some crazy fuel system. So I'd venture to guess this car does have a nice catch can set up on it. Very common for whatever reason to do to these cars. As I step back to get the full picture, let's just take a second to look at this. I mean, Wow, Subaru Legacy. I don't know if the world's biggest tree fell in this thing, but damn. It's definitely not a Subaru video, but that is impressive. As far as the back end, it looks really nice. No damage whatsoever. You have a nice diffuser back there. Those wheels sit out nice and wide. It looks great, honestly. Every time I come to a lot and see Mopars, they have that carbon exhaust tip. It never fails. I need the Mopar guys watching. Let me know why you guys all have these. Are they just that great of a deal? Do they sound awesome? Does carbon spend a ton of money on marketing? Who knows? Anyway, we have a lot more to see, but that car overall, not a bad one. I think this one's gonna be your perfect mix of actually wrecked bad enough to get somewhat of a decent deal on it. And by decent deal, I do mean it's still gonna be around $10,000, maybe a little more. But if you have the skills to fix it, or even better, you have the parts laying around to fix it, might be a good one. Next up, a pretty rough 392 scat pack. Red Brembo's, it has the Bilsteins. The rear end is not bad at all. It is actually completely intact. Don't know about that badge, but what I can see of the passenger side here, also intact. Now we're gonna get back to that glaring issue up front. Pretty nasty front end wreck. It looks like this was a pretty low one as well. It does look like it may have stayed under those front frame rails, but that's not gonna do us a ton of good if that engine got whacked. This car is listed as not starting. We are certainly not gonna be the ones to try to start it. The lower section of the bumper here is completely ripped off. You have control arm damage down there. You have subframe damage. In fact, that control arm is completely ripped out. There are some rocks in the subframe over there, a bunch of dirt and grass. This thing had a low hit, which is fairly terrifying. Obviously the whole radiator assembly, that is completely gone. The core support completely gone, maybe unbolted. It has some inner structure insurance marks right there. So I guess the wheel probably got pushed back into that. That's the most likely scenario. That front apron there also needs to at least be worked. Fenders, hood, front bumper, core support, radiator assembly, lower subframe, suspension. This one, even after replacing all that, still is a little bit of a question. The car does have power as far as mileage, 61,000. The interior, not that bad. It does show some wear. It's a little bit higher mileage for a newer Scat Pack. It has the Alcantara or suede seats with the Scat Pack logo. They're worth a few bucks if you're parting this thing out. Leather door panels, they're also worth a few bucks. Let's go ahead and get the power off on this. Funny enough, no airbags blew on this thing and that is kind of weird. I would not expect that whatsoever. For the Scat Packs that we've seen so far, even though it may look to the naked eye like it was a little bit harder of a hit, I think some of the other ones we've seen have gave a more clear picture of what you need to do to fix it. This one without getting it up in the air is gonna be a little tough to figure out. The issue there is I think it's still gonna pull money close to what some of the other ones would. So if I was buying one to fix, which I'm not, this probably would not be the one for me. We are most certainly in the rougher section of the lot at this present moment, but we found ourselves a pretty sick Jeep. Unfortunately, this one is gonna be a quick one because the car is completely taped up. I'm not sure what, if anything, you guys can see in there. I can't even see much of anything. Do I can make out blown seat bags, and funny enough, the steering wheel bag's not blown. Don't even ask me how, because this is what the front end looks like. 
we have yet another Mopar with the wheel on the hood. Fortunately, this thing didn't get left on the side of the road, didn't get left to some tow lot. So if you buy this thing for parts, you still have a full set of Brembo's. And we cannot do much at all with this. The hood is sealed shut, the interior is sealed shut. This entire side of suspension completely wiped. Axle ripped out, control arm broken. I would have to imagine this thing rolled pretty good because there's dirt in the door jams. It is just a very rough car. There's no other way to put it. Very, very rough. Something that probably will not be fixed, at least not by anybody in their right mind. As far as a parts car, it's probably good for somebody. That somebody's not going to be us because that's just a can of worms I personally don't want to open up. No mistaking that badge, guys. We got ourselves another Hellcat. Ooh, this one got a little crunchy. First and foremost, oil cooler right there, still intact. Very, very important. That's one of the first things I always look at on these cars. If it was broken, you have no guarantee that somebody didn't let this thing run while it was leaking oil. You can end up dropping oil pressure and damaging the engine even if it wasn't damaged in the wreck. Speaking of wreck damage, this rear corner, pretty gnarly. That whole suspension setup hanging on by something. I don't know what it is. It honestly may be like the e-brake cable. That is definitely whacked pretty good. The trunk doesn't line up at all. This quarter panel, all kinked up though in comparison. When you look at that, it's not really that bad. As for the interior, black on black. Over there, it's pretty well damaged. It's not the cleanest car. It doesn't smell great. I'm gonna go ahead and not get in this one because when I said it doesn't smell great, that was a little bit of an understatement if you feel me. I will, of course, however, pop the hood. Interior, not that great looking. The engine bay though, it's intact. It's a little dusty, no big deal. You got yourself a nice carbon fiber intake there. And this looks like it's actually carbon fiber. That doesn't look like a wrap, not hydro dip. That feels and sounds like carbon fiber. So leg maker, good stuff. This car is listed as biohazard. Now that's definitely not always from bodily fluid in a wreck or anything like that. A lot of times it can be caused by mold, water intrusion. They'll label just overall nasty cars as biohazard. For as bad as this one looks, it's still a Hellcat. You definitely cannot rule out somebody fixing this car. There's only so many of these out there and we all know they're not gonna be out there much longer. So as far as the damage, I already touched on the suspension. That rear quarter is just smacked up in, really, really mangled. The door's damaged, the fender's damaged, the wheel's damaged. That cooler down there is damaged. As far as the structure on the front end, it's not that bad. This car is absolutely gonna be one of those borderline cars that maybe gets fixed, maybe it doesn't. The parts market is just so strong on these that bare minimum somebody's paying $20,000 for this thing to part it out. So could somebody really justify beating them out and trying to fix this thing? Are you gonna be in it any less than you could have just went and bought one for? Probably not, but you never know. The salvage auction is a wild, wild place. And the minute you think you know exactly what's gonna happen, somebody comes along and does the exact opposite. And while I was looking that guy over, I scoped out this thing right here. Another car with aftermarket set of wheels. They are Ferradas. They have the Brembos. It is the 392 and the engine does indeed look intact. I'm sure you guys can imagine the more time this sits out here in the elements with no hood on it, the more kind of corroded up and nasty the engine gets. Now the good thing is here, nobody snatched an intake off of it. Nothing's left open there that's not missing the oil cap. We've seen some cars at auction that are missing some of those things I just mentioned and you know if it rains once, that engine is going to be full of water. Front driver's side is definitely the primary area of impact and it is not a light one. The Brembo did survive, the wheel not so much. Now somebody could conceivably want to fix that Hellcat and come out maybe okay on it. This one, absolutely not. This one is a certified parts car. On the parts front, let's see what we have going on on the rest of the car. That wheel is good. The entire back end looks pretty good. It has an aftermarket diffuser or at least those bolt on fins. This side over here, at least the rear quarter area isn't too, too bad. This suspension here, you might get lucky with that. Obviously can't hop in here, but every bag in the thing is blown. The interior is just not in great shape. We probably won't be the ones buying this for parts because we like to buy slightly cleaner cars. But if you do, just count on the interior being a little ratty. Once again, this is just one of the cars that we're not gonna spend a ton of time on because it's not that great. We'll take one more look at the engine here. And I really do not think that thing got touched. I would not have a lot of concerns buying this thing for a drivetrain 
for my project. This one may go just south of 10 grand because it's a little more jacked up. We are not 100 yards down from that last Hellcat in 392, and we run into this guy. This one is hit in almost the same exact way. Wow. The front end on this one, a little better. Even the rear end, a little better. It's not hit quite as hard. But two black Hellcats wiped down the driver's side within 100 yards of each other? Kind of funny. Well, not for whoever owned it, but you know what I'm saying. Unlike the other one, the passenger side on this, all good. Ooh, we got ourselves a nice red interior on this one. Definitely a cooler spec, and it smells a little nicer to boot. Even though that front bumper lip has some damage down there, I'd have to imagine that in some way, shape, or form, that bumper is usable for something, even if it's for nothing more than wall art. Ooh, when I popped this door open, I saw that right there. It's never a great thing when you look inside your car and see the ground. Does it have power? It does not, unfortunately. Still, very cool interior, and if you're buying this thing from a parts standpoint, these door panels, not cheap. We just sold a set of those for like a grand. Wow, it even has the same intake. I swear to you guys, it is not the same car. Leg maker, you guys are doing all right. Apparently every Hellcat in DC has your intake. Once again, just a very nice, clean car. We can't start it. We can't see much else under there. Unlike the last one though, this one, definitely a fixer. Obviously everything on this side is gonna need to be replaced. That floor, it's gonna need to be patched up. It's gonna need to be re-welded. Being that the car's not in there, I can't see exactly what, but you're gonna have to do something down there. Same deal with the rear. Now, is this an easy fix? Absolutely not. Is it easier than the last car? Yes. So we're gonna keep moving and hopefully we can find something else that we can start. But if you're looking for a salvage auction fixer Hellcat, you could definitely do worse than that. I almost backed away, but I can't imagine that we just came across another one right next door again. Well, it's a V8, but it's not the V8. So we're gonna keep moving on that. If you guys wanna see me actually look into the five sevens and do anything with these in future videos, let me know. Oh God, oh God. No comment needed really. The only thing good on this car is pretty much the front bumper. You'll definitely have some brakes on there as well. That one's a little toasty over here. That one is not that bad. So at the very least, one good Brembo, a good front bumper. I'm also sure there's some engine parts that are actually usable there. We do have another Brembo back there. As we've seen with some other cars recently, this is a fire brought on by a collision, not the other way around. This is not a car that mysteriously caught on fire for some reason. It looks like this thing got hit in the back corner here. Maybe something got pushed into the fuel tank. Maybe it sparked up and this is what you're left with. Just rough, rough go of it for whoever owned that thing. Guys, we've ran through almost this entire massive lot and I believe we have found every Mopar in it. The only remaining question, how many do we buy? To answer that, we're gonna have to wait till they all come up at auction. Hopefully we bring home a couple of them because unlike some of the other lots we go to, this one's a 30 minute ride from the shop. We don't have to pay to ship these. I can grab these whenever. Maybe we'll rebuild one. We'll definitely part some out. Either way, stay tuned to see what happens. I will see you next time.